It's very right. You know, before we start, you know, I just, I want to pray because I, I talked to my sister earlier today, and I just want to pray for everybody up north. She had, they had to cancel, you know, her, she works for the college, and they had to cancel classes and everything, and they just flooded, too much water, and they got more, more storms coming, and I think I believe Pastor said, Bobby and Jose on there, getting uh, tornado warnings and up there, you know, we're, we live in a place where the sun's out, it's 60 degrees, ain't not one drop of rain and everywhere else it's underwater. Uh, so let, let's pray for them before we get started. Lord, we just come before you today, Father, and we pray for everybody up the north, Heavenly Father, dealing with these storms, Heavenly Father, for our families that are up there, our friends. We pray that your hand is upon them, Heavenly Father, we pray that just a hedge of protection over them, Heavenly Father. We pray that they're safe. We pray that they're not in harm's way, Heavenly Father, that the water just, Heavenly Father, just begins to go down, Heavenly Father, instead of rising, Lord. We just put it in your hands. We put them in your hands, Father. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, those that have lost uh, a lot of the things that are precious to them, Heavenly Father. We just pray that you just be with each and every one of them today, Father, as we lay them at your feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, it's an opportunity to share the word. Yeah, I like these days. I start to get excited now when I get the opportunity to be up here. And uh, today's word is is just something that, that I know the Lord had on my heart in putting this word together. And, uh, I'm hoping that it speaks to you the way it spoke to me. We're going to open up in uh, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. I got this one, this scripture I got out of the, the NLT, the New Living Translation. Um, so uh, it might be different from your NIV, but it all means the same. Uh, it says, Then Jesus told this story to some, to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Now Jesus is telling this story. It says, Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee. And the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I'm not like other people. Cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at the distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest with sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. Amen. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Man, when I read that, I was like, whew, wow. How quick he was to judge. How quick he was to point the finger at the tax collector's sin and everyone else's sin around him. But he refused to look at himself in the mirror. See, we, we, we live in a, in a world that thinks and judges the same exact way. They stand out and they look through a window and they're looking at what everybody else is doing how everybody else is acting instead of actually sitting in front of what we actually need to be is sitting in front of a mirror looking at ourselves asking God to search our hearts because I know for sure that I, I do not want to have a heart like this Pharisee you know he was supposed to be held to a high standard but man, how low did he look by judging others? And we can't, we can't let that, we can't allow that to happen to our hearts. We can't, we can't sit there and judge others. We need to make sure that we're looking at what we're doing, how we're honoring God, how we're living our lives. See, I said the world is too busy looking out of the window watching what we're doing instead of looking in the mirror and looking at himself. Now, I want you to imagine this. Walking into a church 
with Christians that have the same kind of attitude, have the same kind of heart as this, as this Pharisee did. I think it, it's hard to imagine, but guess what? It, they, there are churches that are like this. You know, in, in my early Christian days, you know, as, 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 as I tried to find myself at a church. You know, we lived in San Diego. I, I would go to a church and I would try to find a church. Even coming back to Brawley, I tried to go to a church and find a church. But when I walked in there, I just didn't feel the love of God. That's why I do my best. And people probably think I'm crazy. But I do my best. Even when I walk in on Sundays, I try to shake everybody's hand. Amen. You know, I, I go to everybody. Hey, you know, good morning, good morning. God bless. Good to see you. And I'll go through every aisle. If I can't reach you, I'm going to wave to you and I'm going to say good morning. You know, when, when you walk into a church like that and you just feel the love, you know God said it. Right? And, and, and right now, I'm going to tell you, there are churches that you can walk into and nobody will even turn their head to see who walked through the door. They're looking straight ahead. <coughs> Nothing has changed. Jesus told this parable and nothing has still changed today. So we need to be very careful to not forget that just because we're saved and we've given our lives to God and, and, and God is using us and he's blessed us and, you know, we, when, when we all of a sudden fell back, we started losing everything. But now that we're back in, in, in the graces of God, he started to give us back what was gone. What was taken, what we lost. Amen. We can't let what God's given us blind us to think, hey man, we're, we're here and everybody else is here. It can happen. You know, because we're getting these, because we get we get we get easily distracted by these things. I said as Christians, we can't allow ourselves to ever forget what God has done for us. Because if we do then if we forget what God has done for us, and we act high and mighty like this Pharisee, how are we glorifying God in our lives? We're not. See, who we were and what we did has got us to where we're at right now. There's a reason why we're here tonight. Everything that we went through, everything that we did, got us here to this point. All the hardships, all the struggles, all the things that you have to deal with, you know, the pain, Whatever, everybody has a, a story that they, everybody has a story. Sister, your story, it could be different from my wife's story. Sister, my wife's story can be different from yours. You know, Pastor Norman's story is different. But there's there's a reason what, why we're here. We had to go through whatever we had to go through. He was teaching us things as we were going through them, but we're here for a reason. You know, those struggles and those hardships, we call that our testimony. Right? That's what we call our testimony. And our testimony is what we're supposed to share with those who are trying, we are trying to help lead to Christ. See, our testimony is our most important thing in our life, in our, in our walk as Christians. See, it, it, it tells us about who we were and who we are now and what God is doing in us. And I say, although we're, we're, our, our testimonies can be different, they all have one thing in common. They should all have one thing in common, our testimonies. There is one thing. They should all glorify God. Amen. Not ourselves. They should all glorify God. See, our testimonies, we say, okay, this is, my this is our testimony. Yeah, it's what God is using you to help speak to other people. The testimony is not yours. That testimony is God's. See, God is just using you and your situation to speak to somebody else. You got to remember, God meant us at our weakest moments in our testimonies. Our weakest moments. Our lowest moments. And at that lowest moment is where we have our encounter with Jesus. And that when you had your encounter with Jesus, that's when your testimony began. See, yeah, everything going on before that was meant nothing. You were you were on a road to, to destruction. You were, it said the penalty for sin was death, right? That's where we were headed. 
But when we had that encounter with Jesus Christ, that's where our testimony began. See, in, in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10, it says, See, I said he met us at our lowest moments, our weakest moments. It says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest upon me. See, God started working miracles in your weakness. He started doing good things in your life when you were weak so that Christ's power may rest upon me. That is why, Christ, for, that is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness. Insults and hardship and persecution and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See, we had to be knocked down. We had to be, we had to be to the lowest point where we were at. Because that's when God started working. That's when Jesus said, Okay, you're broken down. You're they're, they're saying you're unfixable, but well, guess what? I'm gonna pick you up, I'm gonna dust you off, I'm gonna make you all right. Amen. And guess what? Our testimony started right then. Because Jesus started doing something in our hearts. He started doing something in our lives. He started changing who we were, how we acted, how we talked, who we hung out with. You know what I'm saying? All those things started changing. See, it was, it, it says right here, up top, my grace is sufficient. That, is, that, that grace that God gave us is the same grace that we're supposed to give to others. So it's a, it, if that grace God gave us in our weakest moments is that very same grace we are to share with others. In 1 Peter 4.10 it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Amen. As faithful <coughs> stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Let me read that again. Each of you should do whatever gift you have received to serve others. As faithful stewards of God's grace, it is, it is various, it's in its various forms. We tend to think that the gifts that God gives us, that God gives us, are, are the things that we can see and the things that we can use. The things we can touch. Houses. Oh, God's grace, you know, bless me with the house. Bless me with a new car. Man, my bank account's full. Before I was broke, and then because of, and now my bank account's full. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going on vacation for a week in Hawaii. God's good. Hey, I don't see you no more. You're in the desert lot, you got that new desert toilet. God's grace, God's been good. What about the gifts that God, of the, the, the gifts that, that God has given us? that we can't touch. Like setting us free from the, the addictions. Setting us free from the addiction of alcohol. Setting us free from the addiction of drugs. Setting us free from depression, abusive relationships, whatever it may be that was holding you down. See, that's a gift that, we, that God gives us also. Those are the things that we got to be thankful for. Right? See, our testimony, those are gifts. Those are gifts that God gives us, and he wants us to use those testimonies to help someone who might be struggling just like you. Struggling the same way that you struggle. You think it's a coincidence that you cross paths with somebody who might be dealing with the same thing that you do? You think that's coincidence or not coincidence? Find the point. Yeah. That's all part of God's plan. God had a plan for you. He, 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 he needed you to be right there at that moment. See, because whoever was struggling, guess what? You might be, you were struggling with the same thing. So you have a tax code, you have a cheat code, you have, you know, whatever the kids call them on the, the left, right, upright, X, X, X button. Where you get the cheat codes and then you get to the, the extra, you know, the, the, the um, hidden doors and the video games. See, you have that already. Because God helped you get through that. 
Now it's your job to use your testimony to go out there and share with somebody who's struggling the same exact way you were and say, look, I went through that, brother. I went through that, sister. And I searched up and down looking for the answer, and the only one who gave me the answer that I needed was Jesus Christ. See, we're to help. See, the key thing I said is our testimonies are to help lead our brothers and sisters to Christ. See, we can't on our own lead anybody to Christ. See, God allows us through our testimonies to help to be able to talk about what we've been through. In John 4, 7, I, I want to share a story with you. I'm going to share a, sto a, sh a, a story about the, the Samaritan woman who met Jesus at the well. I'm sure some of, you guys, some of you guys know this story, but I'm going to jump a couple chapters here and there. But I, I, wa I want you to see this. Okay, when a Samaritan, in, in John 4, 7 through 10, it says, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into a town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? See, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. They didn't get along. They, 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 they're just, they didn't get along. They, they didn't like each other. So, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift God, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The Holy Spirit. Like I said, Jesus says there are scriptures that Jews uh, did not associate themselves with Samaritans. So could you imagine the look on this Samaritan, this Samaritan woman's face when Jesus said, Will you give me a drink? The look on her face, she's quite shocked. Caught off guard. And then we're going to skip from there. We're going to go to 13 or 14. And it says, Jesus answered everyone, who, answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the what, yeah, excuse me, tongue tied. Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will come in, will, will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I believe it's human nature to put limits on, on what people can do. See, we live in a world that, that, that limits people. That says, okay, you, you can't forgive that person for doing that. Man, that, that, that's evil. You can't, you can't forgive that person for doing that. See, we put a limit on forgiveness. Like, we, like we're the judge. Like, we're the judges, and we want to judge everybody. We want to say, man, I know I know, what, what he did. That, that's unforgivable. We put a limit on, on what kind of forgiveness someone deserves. Jesus doesn't care what you've done. Jesus doesn't care what you've done. See, the living water Jesus speaks about with the Samaritan woman is the same living water he gives today. It's the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, okay, I don't, even though she's a Samaritan woman and he's a Jewish man, he says, you know what, I don't care. That, that doesn't mean nothing to me. I, he's still willing to give her that. But we all get that living water, the Holy Spirit. It's like, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter that, that, that we're not supposed to associate with each other. It's like they tell us, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're, we're believers, we're, we're coming to church, we're praying, we're reading our word, and, and people look at us like, hey, man, how can you associate with that person over there, man? He's a hard on drugs. If Jesus didn't, didn't care what... What, what, whatever was going on between the Samaritans and Jews. He didn't care. He was willing to show love to this Samaritan woman. Aren't we supposed to share, show the same kind of love to one another? Amen. Yeah, maybe, maybe, he's, maybe that person struggling on drugs. Hey, but maybe <coughs> you were too. 
That's where your testimony comes in, right? That's where you start to share, hey man, you know what I was like, you man. Or maybe I was like, you man, I was drunk, I was always drinking, I was, you know. How can we put limits on what, uh, what kind of forgiveness or what kind of compassion we're to show others? But, but yet we live in a world that, that does this. We, we live in a world that wants to put a limit on what God can do. We think, okay, well, God can't. Have you heard this one? God, well, God, God can't forgive him for what he for that. <laughs> Why can't he? Yet God can forgive you for what you did? See, that, that's the way the world thinks. And us as believers, as followers of Christ, we cannot think that way. We can't even let that kind of thought creep into our mind. Like I said earlier, we're, we don't want to be those people staring out the window, judging everybody walking by on what they're doing. Say, man, I can't, believe, I can't believe that they're doing that. And then we're doing it. You know? I can't believe that they're acting that way. Yeah, but behind doors, we're acting that way. You know? I can't believe that they're listening to that. And we're driving down the street, and we're listening to that. See, we're looking out the mirror and we're looking at what everybody else is doing. Instead of looking in the look out the window, now instead of looking in the mirror and looking at ourselves. See, Jesus doesn't care what, every, what, what, what you did or what you're doing. All he wants you is your, he wants your heart. He wants you to confess who he is. He, he wants you to follow him. He wants you to be obedient. He wants you to be faithful. Amen. See, Jesus met that Samaritan woman at the well that day. I picture my I picture this Samaritan woman probably goes up there daily to fill these jars of water to bring down to town. In her home so they could have drinking water or they could whatever they needed to do, wash their clothes. She probably went up there daily. That was something. But do you think it was coincidence that that day Jesus was at the well? No, that was all that was always the plan. That was always the plan. See, check this out. It says, I'm going to skip it down to John 4, 28. It says, 28 through 30, and it says, Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way towards him. See, I told you earlier, I was going to do a little bit of skipping, but before that chapter, he tells her, go, go, go back to town and bring your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. But he tells her, I know, you have five, and the man that you're with isn't your husband. <clears throat> See, he already knew her situation. Just like God knew your situation when he met you at your lowest moment. You didn't have to say, God, forgive me. He wants you to admit your confess your sins. He needs you to say it. He wants you to hear it. But guess what? He already knows what you're doing. So you think that, okay, I'm going I'm to confess this, Lord, but then I'm going to get this one and I'm going to hide it right here. No, he already knows. So he knew her situation, so she was blown away. Like, man, he knows. So I jumped down here and it says this. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of town and they made their way towards him. See, I picture her. If she, It says she left her water jars. I don't picture her just walking calmly down the hill, going to town, you know what I'm saying? I picture her excited. Like, man, this could be the Messiah. I picture her running down the hill. She forgot her jars. And I picture her yelling at everybody, come, come, come see this man I told you about. This could, he told me everything that I did. How many remember, how many of you remember that excitement when you first had your encounter with Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Ooh, I remember that first encounter. Man, I was still a teenager. And, and I told 
told you last time I got to, 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 to share a word, I said, man, the, there's a high that you get to when you're, when you're on drugs. That's, what, that's the problem. See, when people get on drugs, there's this high, that first high that they're always chasing. And they're never going to get there. They just chase it, chase it, chase it, chase it. That's why they just continue to keep doing it, keep doing it. They want to reach that, and they're never going to get there. But there's this high that Jesus gives you. Amen. And I remember that high. It was like, you just want more of it. And you want to share more of it. You want to share with people what he's doing. And people are just seeing him in you. You know, they see you worship. I mean, I used to love to worship. I would have people come up to me and be like, brother, I'm, I'm sitting 10 hours back, and I see you in the front worshiping like that? Man, it, because it was like, I was so excited for what God was doing in my life. You know, and, and I'm sure we've all been there. When we first had that experience with Jesus, we were so excited. We just wanted to share with everybody what he was doing. Sam, real quick, I just want to make a point. We're talking about judging people, and I don't want this to slip by, but the reason she was at the well at noon is because she was there avoiding people. Everyone else would go in the morning to draw their water, but she went at noon to avoid people because she was judged by those people that yeah. she lived with. And that goes back to the Pharisee. <clears throat> what was he doing? He was judging people. I'm not like that. I'm glad I'm not like that. I'm glad I'm not a, a, a sinner like that. See, sin can make us feel a certain way where it's just like, you don't want to show your face to nobody. And I'm sure that's how she felt. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to show her face to the small town. So she went up that hill on her own, by herself, every day, same time, because she knew that this was a time that no one was going to be there. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is a time that no one will be there. I have to fill all my jars and do what I need to do, and, and no one will bother me. God said, I'm going to meet you right there, right there at that moment. Yeah. That's where well, that's yeah. I'm going to be at. Right Amen. there for you. Amen. Yeah. See, and for you, it's the same exact thing. Amen. Wherever you were at, when you had your encounter with Jesus, he said, I'm going to be right there, right at that moment. Amen. I'm going to send somebody your way that's going to be able to share the same thing that you're going through, that, that you're going through, they went through. See, that testimony is so important. And I said earlier, that testimony is not ours. That testimony belongs to God. He just allows us to use it and then to see it through us, and he uses us. Earlier I said, I, I can't lead somebody to Christ. I can help lead somebody. I can't force you to go to, to serve God. But if I'm living out my testimony, if I'm living it out, and you just, man, you can just see. Like, like pastor. Pastor has... He has um, the picture that he carries in his wallet. And he shows it to everybody, right? And they look at it and they're like, no way. That picture's crazy. But you can just see that even through the picture, you can see what God is doing in pastor's life. That's a testimony that he gets to carry in his pocket all the time and he can share it with people. See it? Many of us don't have a picture that we can carry with us. So guess what? People have to look at us and they have to see how we're living, how we're acting, how we're talking, how we're treating others. See, when we're doing that, God is just, they can see Jesus in you. See, because when we, when, we, when we receive Christ in our hearts, we start to take on that image. You know, we start to like I said earlier, act different, <coughs> speak different, you know, treat people different. We start to become better people. We're not, we don't do the things that we used to do no more. Our eyes are open to the things that we didn't understand before. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. See, that Holy Spirit allows us to understand and think the way that God thinks. See, because what? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, right? And if the, if the Spirit of God is living within me, yep. then that means I can think yep. just like God. Amen. So my eyes are open just like God. Mm. See, if I don't have the Holy Spirit in me, I'm looking at things in a worldly perspective. That's right. And I don't understand it. That's so right. you know when, you re, when you're talking to somebody who's not a believer, they think you're crazy. 
Because they don't understand. Yeah. They haven't received the Spirit of God. So guess what? Their eyes aren't open to what you understand. Their mind's not open to it. Yeah. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, that's that living water that he was telling the Samaritan woman about. And check this out. I'm going to go down to John 4, 39 through 42. And if many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Mm. Amen. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of this, Words many more because of his words, many more became believers. Then they said to this woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is the man is really the savior of the world. Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Wow. When I read that, it was like, Phew. So, if they believed in Jesus because of what she saw, what she experienced, her testimony, nothing's changed today. You know how many people that you could save, help lead to Christ? I shouldn't say, we can't save nobody. Right. Help lead to Christ mm -hmm. because of your testimony? Amen. Or... But, but the other thing, could you imagine, though, if she would just walk down that hill nice and calm, kept everything, her experience with Jesus to herself, not said nothing to no one, stayed quiet, sat, just did her, her regular everyday living and just didn't share what happened with her, with, with Jesus. That testimony just, it dies right there. Dies right there. You know, then, then how is it many of the townspeople people became believers? Yeah. Amen. If she would have kept that to herself, no one would have been saying. No one right. would have became a believer. Don't keep it to yourself. That's why I say we can't keep it to ourselves. Amen. It's not ours to keep. Our testimony, and that's why I, I shared today, the word is, it's not ours to keep. That's right. God says, don't keep your testimony for yourself. It's not for you. It's to glorify me. Don't keep it to yourself. It was through her testimony many of these town people became believers. Our job is to help lead them to Jesus. And it's through our testimonies that we can help lead them to Christ. Mm -hmm. You see, it's, 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 like I said, it's our testimonies that can help. I, I, I need you guys to understand that. That's very important. Because, like I said earlier, there's nothing that I can't force you to, to, to Jesus. I like, you, what's that saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Yeah. Right, Mike? That's right. Right? <laughs> the area I worked on, there's a lot of sheep. They have a lot of sheep out there grazing, you know, the, 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 the alfalfa. Man, and they got these water troughs there, you know? And they're all wandering out with their dog. You know, you can, I'm sure they see everybody drinking, they, they see the other ones drinking water, you know, and they'll, when, when they'll come, they'll come. You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't force them to drink. I can help lead you to Christ, but I can't make you accept him as your Lord and Savior. That's, a, that's something that you have to do. See, in our testimonies, they're not drawn, no one, like, they're not drawn to us in our testimonies. When we're talking about our testimonies and we're sharing with people, they're not drawn to us. They're drawn to what God is doing in us and what God is doing through, through us. And I share my testimony, and my wife, she probably gets tired of it, but I really believe my wife has a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because of my testimony. That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Because it, it, there was nothing that I was doing that I could not do. It was it, it was what God was doing in me. 
And I believe that that's the reason today that she has a relationship with Christ. See, I respected her boundaries. You know those boundaries that we talked about between the Jews and the Samaritans? I respected those boundaries. I listened to her when she said, don't invite me to church. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to keep going to church. And I'm going to keep praying. And I'm going to keep seeking God. And I'm going to keep trusting in God that, that he's going to touch your heart. Amen. And that day came. Amen. And it was the, the words that I always remember was, is, you were different. You know, God was doing something in you, and you were different, and I wanted that. See, it's it's that testimony that I share because it was what God was doing in me. That's what is draw, that's what draws people to you. That's right. It's nothing that I did. It's what God is doing. Amen. God was doing it, and my wife, when she was drawn to it, she said, "I want that." I want that. See, so your testimony is very important. It is very, don't be ashamed of it. Don't ever be ashamed of what you've been through or what you've gone through That's and where God has brought you. See, can you imagine how much glory God gives for where he's brought you to? Then share that testimony. Don't be ashamed of it. Like I said, it's not yours to keep. Psalms 147, 3 through 5. I started getting a little fired up. <laughs> Psalms 147, 3 through 5. It says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars and calls them each by name. Great is the Lord Almighty in power. His understanding has no limits. Earlier I said the world puts limits on God. We got a God that has no limits. It says right there, his understanding has no limits. It's so awesome that we serve a God who is limitless. Yet we live in a world that still puts limits on us. So why should I believe that God can't do for others what he did for me? Why, why should I believe that God can only have grace and forgiveness for me, but he doesn't have grace and forgiveness for somebody else? It says his understanding has no limits. I keep going back to that because he has no limits. So as believers in Jesus, don't put limits on what God can do for others. See, this Pharisee, he was there and he was praying to God and he was, but he limited that God could help that tax collector. He thought that, that he was the only one who could receive that grace from God. Yet did he know that all he did was give himself a hope? To the tax collector, all he had to do was just beat his chest. Forgive me, Lord. I'm a sinner. He was made more righteous in God's eyes than that Pharisee. That Pharisee was putting limits. Even as a Pharisee, they're held up in high standard. They know the book. They know the law. But yet he still failed in that moment. And we, that can happen to us. And we need to be very careful that, that we just don't get blinded by all the goodness that God has. Because that can happen. Sometimes a blessing can, can, can become if you allow that blessing to blind you to, to, to think that, hey, you know, you're better off, you're more better off now than others. You know, God's treating you a little bit better now, you know, so don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't allow yourself to think that. Share your testimony. In Psalms 107, 1 through 2, and I'll close with this last one. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. He is faithful, love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed him? Check this out. Then speak out. It says, Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. He tells us right there that we're supposed to speak out. We're not supposed to stay quiet. Don't keep it to yourself. <clears throat> Speak out. Tell others. He's redeemed you from your enemies. So, I guess tonight's word is about your testimonies. 
is your testimonies are given to you by God to glorify God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just he he he, he puts you through these things because that's the reason why we're created. We're not created for anything else but to glorify God. All this other stuff that we have is just a bonus and a plus that God gives us because He loves us. But we're we're created to glorify God. And your testimony is to glorify God. It's not for you to keep to yourself. Don't be ashamed. Amen. So that tonight's word was was about our testimony. <coughs> to share them. Let your testimony help lead someone to Christ. The key word help lead someone to Christ. I said, remember that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Amen. God bless everybody out there in the Facebook world. God bless, stay safe, and we'll see you hopefully Sunday, if not next.